Hey guys, welcome back to <clears throat> Applesauce Podcast. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 11 of the Applesauce Podcast, the only gaming podcast where we say right off the bat, fuck the alt, right? Fuck them. And fuck anyone who associates themselves with Gamergate. Fuck them. My name is Broadway Vic, and joining me, as always, is the enigmatic Mr. Lightman, Manny, a.k.a. Mr. Lightman. What's going on, bro? <laughs> <laughs> you said it twice. Uh, I did. I did. You didn't have to point out my mistake like that. But I do. Anyway, it was yes. Pride yesterday. Pride, yeah. yeah. And it was, it was pretty good. A lot of booths, fun. Right? A lot of fun. Yeah, we did. Uh, played some Tatiana. Some Tatiana, bro, and it was... It was it was an experience <laughs> for sure for sure for sure. Yes yes. Uh, outside of that, we did a three hour stream on on uh, Super Mario Maker, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. Nah, I think that's that's pretty much it, man. It was a pretty it was a it was a, success, a successful stream. It was it was a very successful stream. We had a lot of interaction in the comments. We did. Uh, I hate some of the people who made the levels. Yeah yeah they we have devilish. to we have to definitely get their names down. <laughs> <laughs> they were devilish levels. Yeah. Okay, so we haven't played. Mary- well, you want to speak about this later? Yes, yes. We'll speak okay, about all right. right. <laughs> well, you already know the brand is. We're gonna go over some news surrounding the industry. We're also gonna talk about some games that we've been playing and our opinions on them, uh, plus other things today. Other all right. things. All right, that's cool. So, what do you think? Should we just dive right into the news? Sure thing. All right, let's go for it. So we finally got some more news about Pokemon Masters this past Thursday. They posted, a, oh, Nintendo posted a video on their official Pokemon channel page, right? On YouTube, and you know, they showed off an animated video, which was pretty good. I thought the animation was a little spotty, but that's not the point, right? They showed off, you know, a bunch of past trainers like we spoke about the last time we spoke about the game. You know, they showed Brock, Misty, Erica, I think her name is, and some newer trainers that I don't know the names to. So one of the developers from DNA, right, said that the game takes place in a in a region called Pasio, which, according to him, is somewhere in the Pokemon universe, right? So I, I mean, which is a funny way of phrasing that. I thought that was really funny. So we saw a little bit of the mechanics, right? You're apparently a new trainer who's battling in the Pokemon Masters tournament, right? And you're meeting up with trainers from the past, and you're going to link up with them you're gonna form teams with them to take on three on three battles and i mean it's looking all right you know it's a, it's a turn-based rpg well i mean they're saying it's a real-time rpg battles right no yeah, yeah, yeah. although they did show an, a new mechanic into the franchise right where they where the pokemon trainers themselves are actually involved in the battles in, in some form or another so it's taking place like i guess it's taking the spot of like the potions and like the, the speed ups and the items so you're basically just cheering your Pokemon on so the trainers are a little bit more involved in the game and I think right that that's where the sort of gotcha mechanics come into play you know that you you mentioned it that was it you that mentioned that it may, maybe it was gonna be like a gotcha game with the trainers yeah yeah so well, I think I think it might have been me actually. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> well, either way, I right? just got into the idea of it. I was a very <laughs> oh yeah, you you made it worse. I but did. either way, the mechanics of the trainers definitely lend itself to the gotcha system, where another trainer is gonna have different perks. You know, five star trainer is gonna have the best perks. So they didn't show up too much, but it was just enough for me to go, okay, <laughs> what what is this game really gonna be? How are you guys going to make your money on me? And guess what? I'm going to drop all my cash on this shit. Are you? I am. I don't know, man. Uh, I spent $20 in Animal Crossing already. You just started playing it like last week. I know, week. bro. I know. I have a problem, dude. Apparently, you do. I should have never set up Apple Pay on my phone. Yeah, you shouldn't have. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. I wasn't really feeling the trainer. Mm-hmm. Because they specified these are all like Pokemon Masters and Pokemon Champions. Yeah. And Gym Leaders. Mm-hmm. And you're going to tell me that this rookie came out of nowhere. He's like, oh, I'm going to be in this tournament now? I feel insulted. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I thought it was cool they had uh, Gary in red. They should have let you pick the uh, character or something. You, like, you should have been able to play as like a Gary or a red? Yeah. Or, or like any mm. random Gym Leader to start it off with. 
because I'm I'm really not liking like that really bothered me way more than I thought it was gonna. It's just like, hey, check out all these legends, and guess what? There's a new guy that nobody fucking knows. Right. This and, new and he's already established himself as being a credible enough threat to be to, a part of the Pokemon tournament. Masters tournament. And I'm like, no, just no. There are so many, there are so <laughs> many characters about that. in Pokemon that had the had the game, but like, look, you can customize your character, but it's gonna be a set character, you know? Right? They should have let us play as Richie. Yeah. See, they should let you play as Richie because he's he's at least established himself as a as a trainer, capable trainer. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's been a long time since we've seen Richie. Right, and then imagine being able to give him like a hat, a hat, or like different type of shirt. Yeah, that would be cool. But like this new person coming out of nowhere, nah. Mm-mm. Why? Why does he get to join with with Erica and Brock? Right, get out of like, here. What, what these, Nobody knows what, you. What, what did that person, your character, do? Where they was like, you know what? You can come in and join the best. <laughs> maybe he's just from the region, nah, and they're okay. just like, maybe we need local talent in the in the tournament as well. No, so then get the gym leaders from there. <laughs> Get the gym leaders and the elite four from You're me. asking too many questions. Just give them your money. <laughs> I'm not gonna give them my money until they establish why he why he earned the right <laughs> to be in there. I feel thing. like you're sort of nitpicking this, bro. It's not nitpicking. It's it's just like yo. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, I didn't even think about that. You you mean that's a, that's a valid point. Who is this guy? Right. Why why should we care about him? <laughs> it's not nitpicking. It's more like yo. I, I I would much rather at this point play with an established character. Well, than well. create my no voiceless. By the way, he mm-hmm. had no voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had no voice, and uh, it was just a generic-looking Pokemon trainer. Well, I guess a, a counterpoint to that would be right that this trainer is just you and all your experiences in the Pokemon universe. You know? No. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Just no. I don't buy it into that. Well, well. Listen, we'll we'll learn more about the game as as more details roll out. Okay. I'm already not liking the story though. Well, I mean, there's another thing that I don't like, right? And Which that's is? Phil Harrison. No. Oh. Okay. Right. Because I wanted to say Phil Harrison has officially alleviated all my doubts on Stadia, by the way. Did he? Yep. So is he making you a believer now? Yes. Because he came out, right? And he uh-huh. said, he said, bro, check this out. Uh-huh. He said, Google isn't the one that's going to fix these sort of issues with Stadia. He said, no, 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 my friend. You know who's going to fix those issues? Who? internet service providers how well one of the things that people have been really uh using as a talking point right is data cabs when using stadia they're a real thing he said Uh right historically yes that isps internet service providers have been ahead of these sort of trends where they'll make up new plans and they'll you know up the data cabs of their services depending on where we are in history so like you'll take a netflix and as soon as that started blowing up isp started you know raising their data caps and they started you know in fixing their internet and i'm sitting here right thinking how much bullshit he's spewing right now like because for him to have all this faith in isps bro to do the right thing i mean thing, he works at google well yeah i mean i know obviously he's gonna say it bro yeah. But don't don't slap us in the face and, and think we're we're fucking stupid, right? He's a septic tank right now. It's full of yes. shit. <laughs> I had to think about what a septic tank was. Uh, what you yeah. call it? And yeah, that's not gonna happen. Cause I remember when Netflix first started, my mm-hmm. internet cost went up. Right. Also, see, the... Comcast is not gonna be nice. <laughs> right. Comcast owns like most of the Midwest. They're yeah, not gonna there's... be like, hey guys, we're the only providers for you. Mm-hmm. But we're gonna throw you a bone, cause just cause of Google. Yeah, cause we're we're real we're real nice to our consumers. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Also, Stupid. downtown, you can only get what's their name, like Verizon. Or no, some uh, that, that the TBS people. A Time Warner. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. They changed their name to something <laughs> else. Their service provider. Oh yeah, I, f- I forgot the brand, but this just like shit like this just makes me worry about ISPs going. You know what? We're gonna roll out a new type of service, just just for gamers, right? right? You're paying ninety dollars right now for your internet. Well, guess what? You add another twenty dollars, and we'll you know we we'll, won't throttle your speed. We won't throttle streaming. your speed. You know, we'll we'll uh, make sure that you're you're the fastest one on the battlefield. Yeah, also, who's the idiot who does uh internet? What do you mean? Who's the idiot? Yeah, that dude with the big ass cup. Oh, I do not remember his name. Yeah, he's not gonna <laughs> he's not gonna be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, let's let's lower the prices for these. No. He's gonna be like that price is going up, buddy. We're jacking it up, right? 
This I thing. really hate that guy, by the way. Yeah, I hate him, but Phil Harrison is just... It's, he's he's proven himself to continuously say dumb shit, bro. Yes, he has. And sometimes, listen, it's okay to not speak on something. It's okay oh, to go true. listen. We're 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 working on it right now. Mm-hmm. We're working with ISPs to see if there's anything that we can do on our end to alleviate any sort of stress that they might have. Yeah, uh, uh, because of our services. It's called a check. Make it out to the make yeah. it, make it out to the ISPs. Listen, bro. If you're rolling out something that has this sort of backing from Google. They should do their very best to make sure that this product rolls out without any hitches. You think Google's gonna lower their price for their fiber optics? Google isn't that is that even still available? I'm not sure. Did they give up on it? God, um, the fact they, that we it, have to just, ask that question just, that just talks about how stadious longevity is gonna be. Right. I mean, they pull the plug on a lot of things, bro. Oh, very quickly. Which also reminds me how Phil Phil Harrison, I think, was it? Who's that? That the prices on games are not going to be cheaper on Google Stadia. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, yeah, it's not. Yeah, he, he, said, he, he also said, why do we expect that to happen? Well, I mean, but, we're not buying anything physical. We don't own these We're streaming them. That's why, you idiot. All right? Like, it's like, first of all, there is no way I'm ever going to spend $60 on a license like that. Yeah, and Cause you're, you need, you're just paying for the license to stream the game. Yeah, there's a difference between... Um, Doing that on Xbox, PlayStation, the Switch, and on Steam. Because mm-hmm. you can play without an internet. Yeah, just download the game. Yeah, right. You can't do that on Google. On uh, Stadia. It's going to be like, oh, you have no internet connection? Can't play it, bro. Sorry. Yeah, which is like, I don't... People are just going to like eat it up, too. I don't think that so. That or... I don't think so, because you, you, you have to pay $15 for the stream. Yeah. I mean, $15 for the service. Mm-hmm. Than sixty dollars per game, which is like what? What is that? And then that you also need though? a dongle, that that uh, the the Chrome extension, right? Oh yeah, to like play it on your TV. Yeah. yeah. Or you can hook your your computer up to the the screen as well. But well, either way, bro, you're paying you're paying for the subscription, mm-hmm. and on top of that, you got to pay individual like you got to pay sixty dollars. I mean, they said there was gonna be some deals and shit, but I doubt that. Yeah, but I get the same deals on PlayStation and Xbox. Yeah, even like, the Switch has deals. Listen, I'm not, I'm not gonna pay forty dollars to only stream Destiny Two, bro. I'm just uh, not gonna do it. Also, when you're playing Destiny Two on Stadia, mm-hmm. you're only gonna be put up against other Stadia players. Yeah, they've said that. So, I mean, uh, how's that lobby gonna look? Listen. So between Stadia and Peak Wii U, who's gonna have more people? I would online? have more faith in Wii U having a, a larger base. In their online games. See? That's the thing, man. It's just like... I don't... I have no faith in Google Stadia. That's true, man. It's, I, I, it's gonna take a lot of effort on Google's end for them to, to convince me to buy into this concept. I'm never buying into it. It's just... Because, first of all, you're streaming the game. I mean, your internet has to be strong enough, first of all, to stream the game, right? And then second of all, to do matchmaking on top of that. That's true. There's way too much going on here for me to to be any anywhere remotely close to being convinced. I remember that this like, service will work. It takes like 16 gigs, right, to stream a game or something. Uh, it takes a lot of data. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, like a ridiculous amount of data. Way too much, to be honest with you. I'm pretty sure I can download more games than I would be able to play on Stadia. Like if I download my Xbox 360 library, mm-hmm. it'll still be a shorter amount of things <laughs> in that like one month. Four days of of streaming 4K Stadia. Yeah. I remember, you have to pay for the 4K. Yeah, yeah, you have to pay even more for that. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're, we're I don't want to stay too too much on Stadia, but I, something I do want to mention, right, mm-hmm. is Jason Schreier. Yeah. I, I think I always ask that every time I say his name. <laughs> is is one of my personal favorite uh, journalists in the industry. The I guy's mean, broken it. stories like the anthem. How many journalists are there in the industry? Is that was that a shot, bro? Was that a shot at the industry? I mean, they they can take it how they want. But I I've only seen a, a couple, shot, I've only seen like a handful of people actually break news. Bro, I'm not mm-hmm. gonna lie. I I wish sometimes this, moments like this. Why I wish we had a soundboard, bro. <laughs> I'd, I'd hit you with so many air horns right now. But yes, Jason Schreier just brought us another big story. This time it's involving Treyarch and mm-hmm. Activision, and the headline I believe is something like the human cost of developing oh, Call of Duty. Of Call of Duty, yeah. yes. So the article it kind of touches on a bunch of different things from the crunch culture of, of Treyarch, 
Yes. To how contractors and and freelancers are being treated and being paid while they're working on a huge franchise like Call of Duty. Yeah, I, I read the article. It was kind of depressing, actually. It's fucking sad, bro. It is. I didn't write too much new because I had personally listen real quick. I just want to say this real quick. I had a a, a pretty busy week, <laughs> so <laughs> I was a little occupied this week, or well, this past week. So I wasn't able to write too much news. The news that I did write is kind of sad, bro. It was pretty, pretty depressing. It was. But yeah, just to go back to the article, right? They were talking about how contractors aren't getting paid n- nowhere near as much as, you know, like a developer who's a full-time employee, right? Mm-hmm. And he, they were talking about how sad it is to see once bonuses come in, that the parking lot will, will be filled with a bunch of... New cars. New Teslas. Yeah. Which... We found out we're like $87,000. <laughs> and then they come in with their beater cars and their starter cars. And I'm, they also have just... to park in a different spot. Yeah, bro. Also they, that, they, bro. They have, they have employee parking lot and then they have apparently contractor contractor's parking lot. Yeah, but you can only see like the employer's uh, parking spot. Yeah, like that whole, that whole article to me was just, it was devastating to read. Yeah, one of the things that, that sort of resonated with me was the part in the article where they talk about the testers, mm-hmm. which, you know, I we've both been at, at the bottom of companies, bro. No, definitely. We know how it feels like to be treated without a second thought. Mm-hmm. So to see something like this still happening in such a huge company like Activision, especially to, to people who are really important to the industry, bro. Like QA testers, we don't speak enough about them. But they they are actually, instrumental to uh, to the development I, of. I actually games. like to believe that the community does speak a lot about it. They just mm-hmm. don't give them the credit they deserve. Yeah. Because for every bug and glitch that you find, mm-hmm. they found more of them. Yeah. And because of that, you don't find the ones that they got rid of. It's just it's a it's a thankless job, dude. It is. If a game rolls out, if a game like a like a Mario Kart Eight rolls out, it's great. It's perfect. People mm-hmm. people don't credit the QA testers who had to really right. work on that shit, bro. I think I actually think Nintendo's probably one of the few people few publishers that actually puts their QA testers up on the screen like that with a thank you, Mario Club. And oh, is Mario. that what they are? Yeah. Oh shit. They they even have their own name. Yeah. But yeah, but the testers here, bro, at Treyarch mm-hmm. are treated like second rate citizens, bro. I actually so the think article that's too was, high for them. <laughs> Even right, I think I might have been too generous. Right, the article touches on how you know, like the company will hold a party, and management would come tell QA testers like, "Don't go to the party," or if you do, you're only allowed to be there for I think 20 minutes. I think that's what the article says. Yeah, and, and also go back to don't testing. drink because you still got work to do. Yeah, and I- and another thing, don't talk to the developers, please. All right. So so you're 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 walking on eggshells, right? A tester was saying, first of all, they were shocked that they were even invited to the party in the first yeah. place. Oh man! I and also, feeling, they're like... they're terrified of talking to developers because they're scared that management is going to see it and be like, "We're going to fire your ass now because we told you not to t- talk to them." It's just like, I mean, we've been we've been in that type of situation. Yeah, where you see management throwing parties for the success they had nothing in. to do with. Yeah, so yeah. it's just it's it sucks, bro, to see that. A company as huge as Activision still participating in things where you're, you're you're shitting on your employees, shitting on on, you know, just like paying them wrong, paying them not as well, and telling them you're not even good enough to speak to the other to the other to the developers. Are you kidding me right now? Right. Jesus. Just, damn. That's crazy. But of course, right? With with a story like this, and you guys should definitely check the story out. Yeah, so this, uh, we'll put a link to the... Yeah, try, try to definitely we'll link put it a in link the description. To it in the description, yeah. But of course, why stop there, right? Mm-hmm. Because the co-founder of Blizzard, right? I don't know if you, if you read... I think you oh. actually sent me the, the yeah, story. Yeah. I, I know, uh, his I name is Mike Cormain. He told Eurogamer that Blizzard, without the crunch... Wouldn't be Blizzard. Wouldn't be Blizzard. What it, what are you saying? That has dude? got to be one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. And this, like, I know he, like, he doesn't work at the company anymore, yeah. right? But to be so brazen about it, dude, for him to say the company's unsustainable without crunch, what are you saying, dude? Right. To to care so little about your employee, because I, I, 
I t- guarantee you this, bro. He's not there doing the crunch himself. Oh, he's not. They never are, man. He's in, he's in his office telling other people to work 60 to 80 hours because this has to be done. Like I said, yo, we, we've been there. We've seen management come in, come in at the same time as us. Yeah. But then we're playing the 16-hour shifts, and they're gone. Yeah. They're gone at 6 p.m. They're, they're, <laughs> exactly. They, they come in in the morning, make sure that we're doing everything. All right. Make sure that we're doing everything. Then Put their coat back on and say, right. hey, guys, keep doing a good job. I'm, I'm heading out. And then, chances are they have the audacity. And then they have, sometimes they actually do have the audacity of coming in the next day and be like, man, work. Am I right, guys? What yeah. are you talking about? You left You left halfway through my shift. Work. <laughs> I wish I had your work. Right. Come in. Check to make sure everybody's doing a good job. Now, I understand there's there's a bureaucracy to it, right? No, definitely. They're, they're doing their own thing. So, I'm not saying they're not working. I'm just saying you they might not be working as hard as the people who are working 80 plus hours to to make sure that the next World of Warcraft right. patch let works me, correctly. Let, let me see that time card. Right? It's like, come on, dude. Just sh- just knock it off, dude. Right? Plus, um, that's a problem if your company can't be sustained without crunch. Also that, dude. If you believe wholeheartedly that your company is unsustainable without a terrible practice like crunch time dude and yeah. and i i believe this with all my heart bro that the industry will eventually shift in favor of the employers the I employees so. right what what is what are these companies going to do when the employees or the employees aren't, aren't working 80 to 120 hours anymore delay games but you think, i mean I'm, i don't care about delaying games you know nintendo did it i don't care it's like that that old miyamoto quote like a delayed game <laughs> can eventually be good <laughs> right right it's just like man they don't care dude they and they're, as they as get they away their quarterly financial reports that's all that's all that matters dude. right i understand businesses are a business that doesn't mean you got to treat your employees like shit that's true i man. really hope like there have been companies that have that you're seeing are successful without crunch you know? yeah or with a with a lack of as much crunch as everybody else, right? And I know it's it's even something that's outside of the industry, but man, it's it's sad to see, bro. No, definitely. Um, what the movie? The movie industry also have crunch with the CGI effect people. Oh, does it? Yeah, it's I crazy. didn't know about that. That's crazy. Yeah, that's something people don't really talk about. They think like crunch is just a like thing a that happens game. in video game thing, but it's not. Like once you once you get around to meeting the C- the people who do the CGI work, mm-hmm. they go through some bad crunch, horrible crunch too. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Some companies even close down after one movie just because they can't afford everything. Oh, yeah. I actually have heard about com- the CGI companies yeah. are shutting down after, like, a Toy Story comes out, right? Yeah. And then, like, it's not just, oh, they did the work for some movie that bombed. Mm-hmm. It's they did the work for, like, like AAA. Like a Toy Story or, like, an yeah. Avatar. Yeah. And uh, what's the, the the Life of Pi? Mm-hmm. That, that studio closed down, too. That studio. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember that story, dude. You, just... you also remember that article about the... CEO of a company where he was like I cut down the hours to 30 hours a week in my uh, in my business mm-hmm. but then I started getting lazy working only 30 hours a week so now I'm, I returned everything back to 40 hours and on top of that I also expect people to now work a couple more hours on top of it because if I was being lazy I can only imagine the effect that it's having on my employees yeah no like what are you t- <sighs> I don't know. No, the world don't revolve around you, bro. Right? Just because you're lazy don't mean I'm lazy, okay? I'm it doesn't still putting mean in my work for them 30 hours. People busting their asses. Right? What is... I don't it's know. It's like you might... You, uh, you might seem lazy, but they're confusing it with being relaxed. <laughs> right? There's a big difference between being lazy and being relaxed. At and work, when I yeah. use, when, like when my, when, my type, my, when my shift went to 30 hours a week, mm-hmm. people would say, oh, he's being lazy. No, I'm relaxed because I can handle this. It's, this is stress off me. Yeah, so no, but that's that's actually a good point, man. People would see me at work and they'd be like, "Dude, are you even working?" And I'm just sitting there, like, "Yeah, I'm just not fucking miserable all the time like a lot of people are." <laughs> just, bro, I'm, we're, I'm just typing. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's I'm, I'm actually doing exactly what I have to be doing right now. I don't have to take you're, care you're of you're actually uh, delaying my my job right now. Right. I don't have like twenty projects to do at one go. Yeah, I'm, Which, I'm good right for now. those people. I understand, but my God, man. Holy shit! Uh, yeah, they really need to unionize. So, Mike Mike Morham, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you, bro. <laughs> I think that's uh, all the news that I'm gonna cover for this week. Although there is 
uh, some announcements that we'll touch on later at the end of the show. All right. So we're just going to move on to the games that we're playing, uh, plus some other things that, that happened over the past week. All right. Should be fun. Let's do it. Okay. So this week we can actually talk about the game together because we play, we've play. we been playing Super Mario Maker 2. We streamed it for about three hours. Yeah. And it was the most horrible experience of my life, bro. <laughs> there was no satisfaction to the three hours that we played together. I can prove otherwise, actually. Go ahead. You I got off. the clip on Instagram. Yo, follow the Instagram right now. Pull the clip that I posted up. And you're going to see how dissatisfied I am with that stage that we ended up beating. No, you're not. You you literally got off your chair and started celebrating. You was jumping up and down. It was a, a celebration bit. of anger. Nah, nah, nah. There nah. was hatred in that celebration. There was, there was joy in that celebration. It was like when a football player back in the old days would tackle somebody and break their spine and they were happy about it. That was the sort of celebration that I was doing, okay? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that was pretty <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. Like, oh, geez, I'm sorry, guys. Nah, the last week, I don't even know what to do there. I can't follow that up. There was a lot of intensity there. I'm sorry. But I worked it out, okay? All right? But what were your opinions on Super Mario Maker 2? I love it. I actually, I love playing what the community makes. It was I, I did not know that the experience of Mario Maker 2 was so reliant on community stations. <laughs> How dumb of a statement was that, bro? That's very dumb. But, uh, Are you telling me the fun is in the point of the game, Vic? Oh, please tell me more. Go on, tell me. <laughs> well, we were streaming, right? Yes. And we were playing. We started off with the story. Yeah, we obviously, only did like yeah. three, three or four levels. Before the very first person chimed in and was like, hey, try my stage out. We didn't beat his stage. It's short and easy. <laughs> quick, simple, and, and it's quick right. and simple. Mm-hmm. That was his words. The, literally his words. You can check it on the live chat. I've never felt like an inadequate man, like more in my life, bro. My my excuse is I had rust in my fingers. Shut up! I haven't played a I haven't played a two D Mario game. No, I don't no. I don't want to hear that. Mm-mm. Nah, that, that, that like I haven't. Yeah, no, you see, no, I hate game. you, bro. No, no, no I haven't <laughs> played a two D Mario game since New Super Mario Brothers. No, on, New Super on, Luigi's U. On Wii, on the Wii, U. Wii U. Yes, it's been a long time. Is what it's you're saying? It's been a very long time because. I mean, you had the 3D Mario, and I didn't buy a new Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. Word. We probably should have gotten the, the rust off a little bit, you know? Yeah, we should have. But uh, his stage was evil. I almost cleared it, and then he had an invisible block. I Yo, music. bro. Oh, my God. You guys really got to check out the stream, because that moment was incredible. That killed all my morale to beat that stage. Yeah, we were like, next stage, please. Yeah. <laughs> because it took us, like, a good 40 minutes, maybe, mm-hmm. to just get that far. And it's only like three jumps. The stage is only like four, th- three to four jumps, right? Yeah. Hey, like you jump to the platform, it falls, jump, jump, jump again, jump, fall, five fall, jumps. fall, jump, and then you gotta grab the shell and do a shell hop. Then, yeah, yeah. I hate him. I evil. hate that person. The the even the Mario Maker Two is literally bringing out the worst in humanity. It does. And then the the thing that killed me was that he never even brung up the hidden block. He was like, "What hidden block?" I didn't put that there. All right. Well, shut up, you asshole. The, the, that really killed my morale, though. <laughs> but, you know, the, the game, I forget how tight the controls are on, on Mario games, bro. Yeah. This just reminded me just, like, the the perfection in platforming that Nintendo has gotten now. Oh. Like, you're, you're not going to get a, a better platforming experience than a Mario game. At least, in, in my Donkey opinion... Kong. With Donkey Kong, yeah, but Don- I feel like Mario has, they're aiming for more precise controllers. With Donkey Kong, you really feel the physics of, of Donkey Kong. Or you feel the physics of a, of a Trixie or even Funky Kong. They all play sort of differently. So, Whereas, I mean, then you have, uh, what's his name, Cranky Kong with the stick? Yeah, so, you know, you, you have a bunch of different uh, sort of play types. And, you know, you get that in Mario too, but the... I always felt like the focus was Mario, and mm-hmm. this is the way to play the game. Mm-hmm. Whereas, if you want to play as a Toad or a Luigi, that's just like a fun spin on 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 the game, you know. I love Luigi's fixes, physics, but just the preciseness and the tightness of the controls, bro, because it's it's almost pixel perfect, dude. No, they are, yeah. 
So it was it was a lot of fun to experience it again. I I don't know why every time another 2D Mario game comes out, I go, I'm not going to play it. And then when I do end up playing it, I'm like, this is the most fun I've had in a, in a long time. All right. So we only managed to play three, three levels. We streamed for three hours <laughs> and we only played three stages, bro. We beat two of them. Two of them went down. Yes. Mine was a little more difficult than yours. No, it wasn't. Um, no, Matt, th- the reason why sometimes I want you to delete that stream, bro, yeah. is because I feel like people are going to see my stage, the uh-huh. one that I, that I played, yeah. and they're going to be like, what the fuck is wrong with this dude, bro? <laughs> that is the easiest stage in the world. The sliding stage. The sliding stage. Also, shout out to Victor Pauls. Victor Paul is my man. I yeah. fucking hate you, bro. Because <laughs> he, he, he was the second one to give us a stage to do. Yeah. And he put out a bounty on you. <laughs> he, he called you out. Well, he put a bounty on me beating the stage. He didn't put a bounty on. Like he's not trying to get me killed out here, you know. <laughs> no, that's true. But yeah, he 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 said he has no faith in your skills to beat his stage. <laughs> Took you forty six minutes. <laughs> when we cleared the stage, it said sixteen minutes, and I was like super like, oh look, it only took me sixteen minutes. But uh, Victor Pauls was on the comments yeah. was like, I've been watching this stream for forty six minutes. Right. That's how long it took you to beat this stage. Yes. You don't have to point out people's flaws on the <laughs> internet all the time, guys. I thought that was hilarious, though. And then we had uh, Fordos? Nordseer. Nordseer? F Nordos? Yes. It, it's So it's F N O R D L E S. He told me it's pronounced Nordseer. Okay. Wait, well, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, he gave us the third stage. Yeah. That we, 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 we attempted. Mm hmm. And first of all, I hate you. Because as I was doing this stage, you just kept talking to Victor Paws. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Completely ignoring the fact that I was just dying all the time in the background. <laughs> it's some of the most hilarious thing ever because you're just having a friendly conversation with Victor Paws. While you're just like casually While I'm dying. Casually in the background. dying in the background, yeah. Just having the worst time of your life. Right. While a pleasant conversation's happening on on the chat. Yes, and uh, that one took me about fifty two minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like fifty two, fifty eight minutes to I mean, finally clear. It was it was a hard stage. It was hard. Yes, and uh. I got good, and then my skills immediately dropped after a bit. <laughs> and so happy when I finally made it halfway through the stage. Yeah, when well, you finally got the checkpoint. <laughs> yes, once I got the once I got the checkpoint, I was so happy. Yeah. Also, that shortcut you gave me, bro. Oh. Evil. <laughs> that was that was fucked up, dude. It was. It was. It was hilarious, though. I laughed. Could not stop laughing. So I, I love Mario Maker. That shit was I, so I wanted to ask you also, right? Do uh-huh. you? feel feel or do you see like a huge difference in between Nintendo's philosophy in in stage design Mm -hmm. versus the people making their own stages online or do you think that these sort of experiences can pass off to a sort of Nintendo experience if that makes sense Uh, these will remind me of like Mario 2 Japanese Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's that that's what like the community to me does more like the Mario 2 yeah, it's cause like I see it as they've just played Mario for so long mm-hmm. that they want to push themselves. Oh, okay, all right. To me, that's what it is. It's like, oh, I'm I'm just like, I love Mario, and Nintendo's amazing at their level design, mm-hmm. but they're not gonna make a stage specifically for me. Mm. But I can make myself that stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this is what we get. So it's like, it's it's everybody's stage has this sort of shared quality where they're just like we grew up playing these games yeah. we we kind of know well I don't want to say we know how to design the stage but we kind of get it yeah, you know like, like we've played so many Mario stages that we know what, what the essence of a Mario game is yeah like what what the essence of a, of a stage is you know yeah so we can just we, we're gonna push that a little harder yeah but sometimes people just go fuck it I'm gonna make something evil yes something only I can beat <laughs> and I hate you person <laughs> Don't why are you like that? Who right. hurt you? <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, so far, it's been hard because, like I said, mm-hmm. it's, I haven't played Mario in a while. Yeah, but yeah. you can you can clearly see the progression of skills increasing as the stream as, goes on. Yeah, as we as we keep on playing, we're just yeah. like, okay, all right, we're, we're I starting finally to got understand down the spin controls. Jumps. You know, see what what pixel I can and cannot touch. <laughs> Although there there are sometimes like in the middle of it where we're just dying. At the beginning yeah. <laughs> of the stage. 
Yeah, because it's like it's after after a point of just consistently dying, it's like you kind of start giving up. Right. But yeah. then I guess just like some random run, you then like you get your second win. Yeah. Yeah, you're just like, oh shit, wait, I think I can beat the stage. Right? If I try a little harder. Man, um, the funny thing is when I got halfway through the stage, mm-hmm. it was just me like super casually playing <laughs> when I finally beat it. Yeah, it was, bro. I I don't even think I was watching the screen. No, you weren't. You were. <laughs> oh, by the way, yeah, you, you started playing Smash Brothers <laughs> with Victor Pause as I was still dying. As you were dying, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, in the middle of the fight, I told him to stop. Yeah. Uh, so we can watch you beat the stage. Yes, but you still didn't finish. It. <laughs> you went back to play we after I hit to the after I hit the checkpoint. <laughs> I had no faith in you at that time. You did not apparently. It was. So, Mario Maker 2, bro, I, I didn't... Because I didn't play the first part, right? I don't know why. I didn't know what to expect from the game, dude. Mm-hmm. But... And I honestly, I thought we were just going to stream for, like, maybe 50 minutes to an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. We ended up streaming for three hours, and I had fun, like, the whole time, dude. Uh, it was some of the best fun I've had so far. I didn't I didn't expect it, honestly. Like, I've seen, I've seen like, the stages people make. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've seen, like, like, donkey donkey videos, you know? <laughs> I'm never going to beat some of those stages. For sure. Like, maybe if you give me a week, just not stop playing that one game. Then but you might then you might get pull off a, a lucky run. Right? <laughs> but, yeah, like, I've seen, yeah. I, 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 I want to see what they make now with, like, the added stuff. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. on and off switch, the timing platforms. There's just so much, bro. I'm like I said, I, I didn't know what to expect. I'm super happy with the game. I can't wait to do another stream because Wednesday. Victor Pause says that he has another stage for us ready to go. He did uh, streaming on Wednesday, by the way. Yeah. So that's gonna that should be interesting because he gave us a little a tease of what his stage is gonna be like, <laughs> which didn't look too hard. But right? hey, whatever. We'll, we'll we'll see what the finished product looks like. It should be fun. I can't wait. Is there anything else you've been playing? Outside of a uh, Mario Maker, mm-hmm. I swear to God, bro, you say Marvel Strike Force and I'm gonna hurt you. All right, so I'm just gonna say this then. Mm-hmm. I unlocked Phoenix. It took all my resources. She's amazing. All right, I'll give you that much at least. All right. Also, outside of that, I want to quickly say that I finally got to taste the strawberry guava coke and the blueberry acai coke at Pride. My sister found them. I have no idea where. I've been looking for them like crazy. So I cried when she gave them to me. It was amazing. I swear to God, it was like that scene in Ratatouille. Uh, uh, where, the, <laughs> where, where he has a flashback to his childhood. To his child. <laughs> I swear to God, I saw that spark in your eyes, bro. It was. It was a. Uh, I, I love my little sister. Yeah, she's yeah. amazing. Thank <laughs> she's you great. for the soda. So there's a uh, outside of that. I, I just kind of wanted to, to speak about what I did over the weekend, right? Uh-huh. What we kind of did over the weekend. And I did the Mary Maker 2 event. I went there to the New York, well, the Nintendo New York store, right? Yes, Nintendo NYC. So and it was a weird experience because we're trying to, we're starting to, we're trying to roll out some new content, right? Where yes. I kind of go to different places and kind of just check in and report, see what the vibe is like, where where I'm at. Yeah. And Mary Maker 2 event was a lot of fun. You know, I walked in there. So, all right. So, first of all. Fuck you, bro. Because you had me out there in, like, 92-degree weather mm-hmm. waiting on the line by myself, by the way. Yes. When I got to the line, uh-huh. I was the only person there without a child or without a friend there, <laughs> right? And so, and because I have the camera in my face, right, I'm talking to the camera uh-huh. and just, I even say it, the amount of narcissistic energy that had to be radiating for me, bro, had to be through the roof. Because people were, were looking back at me and they were just like, this guy is here by himself, making a vlog. How how far up his own ass is he that he's he's gonna do this right now? Is it? I mean, if honestly, if you go to the if you go to the Nintendo World Store, thinking mm-hmm. thinking that you don't go there that often, because that that is nothing new. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. So I was on the line anyway, right? For about forty minutes. I was waiting to get in line. I was waiting to get into the store to the event. Uh-huh. When I finally got in, dude, the the very first thing that happened to me was there's so there's a check in, right? There's a security guard in front of like a little velvet rope, 
and he has to check your bag, right? So here's the thing. I went with the microphone that had the uh, wind protector on it, right? Yes. So it looked a little bulky in my bag. So when he opened it, he asked me, what is this? <laughs> Bro, I've never freaked out more in my life because I, it, it, to be honest, it resembled a gun. It, it looked like I was. <laughs> I think this guy thought for a second that I was about to shoot up the Nintendo uh, store, dude. So that that freaked me out for a little bit. Uh, but when I wa- when I finally got in, it was it was a nice experience. You know, it was definitely tailored towards the kids. Of course, they were handing out like construction hats that you could get if you complete the events that they had. So they had like a scavenger hunt where you have to look for the logos in different parts of the store. Which, they they had to change the location of one because it was so difficult to find. Because really? it was such an, it was in such an obscure area, dude. It was Where behind was it? a pillar, all the way at the bottom, like in the pillar that nobody checks behind. <laughs> so so they had to switch it up, and they they gave the answer to a lot of people who were just missing that last one. Oh okay. And they also had this little one v one thing where you have to recreate Mario using. Uh, parts of a stage so like you'll use coins for his head and you'll use blocks for his legs so you had to compete against another person I, had, I was competing against this girl which by the way shout out to her because she gave me all the locations to the scavenger hunt so I didn't have to work <laughs> hard for that so I appreciate that and before we started she she stopped me and she was like I just want to let you know that I'm going to win because I am an artist and I <laughs> so, bro <laughs> I'm from the Bronx, dude. All right, <laughs> I'm just I'm looking at these people like, what the fuck are they talking about, bro? It's just it it, it was just a different environment for the, for me to be in, bro. Uh-huh. So she was like, I'm an artist, so I'm probably gonna win. Okay, so she lost. <laughs> <Okay>? <laughs> I I beat her so badly, dude. Like it's probably because she wanted everything perfect because she's an artist. She put like two pieces down. I I. At least try. Like, I got Mario's head and I got his leg. Uh-huh. And the guy was, like, uh, he kind of, like, made fun of her. He was, like, your your piece is sort of minimalist. And this guy <laughs> is, like, an abstract piece because he just threw whatever he had onto the board <laughs> to try to make something out of it. But either way, I got the stamp. I drew my own level, which I'm very proud of. The guy said it looks just like a Mario stage, and uh-huh. I believe him. And I got the construction hat, bro. And the whole time I was there, dude, I was, like, I'm not a child. I am not going to stand on these stupid lines to do these events to get a construction hat. Cut to 30 minutes later, I'm walking out the store <laughs> with a with a lollipop, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and a construction hat on my head with the Mario logo on it. And the adults that were walking past with their children, were just, I felt the judgment coming from them. But you know what? <laughs> I had a smile on my face. So that was a lot of fun. Nah, that sounds cool. Sounds that cool. happened on Saturday. So Sunday was Pride Day. And of course, you already know, Applesauce Podcast, we love the LGBT community. Yes. We figured, why not help? So we volunteered at a booth. So here's the thing. We volunteered at a corporate booth. Right? Yes. <laughs> uh, my little sister our little sister was there, too. It was, it was a lot of fun. So the organizer is a person from corporate, right? So there is a certain way that we had to go about presenting ourselves because technically we're presenting the corporation at we're this rep- point. <laughs> we're representatives of the company right? right but here's the thing right the people who ended up volunteering were not people from like the the bougie places of of the company yeah they were there were people who were just like you and me bro okay from the hood <laughs> and so we were running short on supplies of so, like yeah no 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 right so mm-hmm. it's 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 uh people from the hood Mm-hmm. Plus a loudspeaker. Plus a loudspeaker. Everybody already knows what that what that means. Well, yeah. So just just stick with me a little bit, right? Corporate guys, they're playing their little poppy, trashy music, right? Which okay, listen, I don't want to shit on pop music. It's it's still great, but I, I it's not really my cup of tea. So they're playing their their safe music, right? And we were running low on supplies, like water bottles and snacks for for the volunteers. Yeah. So the corporate organizers. We're like, okay, we're we're gonna we're gonna leave for a bit. Um, Vic, watch the other guy, watch the booth, please, because I feel like he might be up to no good. Mm-hmm. So he he leaves, right? I immediately say so he leaves, and the moment they're out of 
my eyesight. I, I look towards the guy and I, I tell him, play some gang shit right now, bro. <laughs> He's like, you don't even got to tell me twice. Bro, they put us in charge of the music. And like we said, hood. Like we said. Stereos. <laughs> people stereo from speakers. the hood, large stereo speaker. Cut cut the pop music off. Right. We played Tatiana by Blueface. Now, listen, guys. If you don't know Tatiana by now, please listen to this song. You will realize why this was such a terrible idea. But when I tell you, bro, the amount of people we got to the booth <laughs> because of how ratchet it got, not because of our corporate, you know, <laughs> our corporate uh, uh, shtick, right? <laughs> People, bro, people were, were twerking. They were grinding on each other. And this is this is by a corporate booth, dude. <laughs> right? When when the organizers came back, the shock and the disappointment in their face. Because to, to, for them to go away for five minutes and come back to people who... Bust down, thought the end of bust down. <laughs> <laughs> Which, first of all, the moment they left, right? We started pouring out drinks. So we, we started drinking alcohol the moment they left as well. We started playing Tatiana. So we turned into degenerates, bro. Five minutes. No, no, no more than five minutes after they left. So they came back to us playing Tatiana with Cardi B's remix, mm-hmm. which is even worse, arguably, because this shit that she says in that song is disgusting. It is. It's a great song, but it's gross, the shit that she says and how explicit it is. So we got into a little bit of trouble. Okay, they told us to stop the song. Yes, and they reminded us that we are corporate representatives. Okay, at this point, yes, even so, though time was donated. <laughs> exactly, even though we were volunteering our time here, right? Right. We're still corporate representatives. We have to be careful how we present ourselves because people started uh, recording the booth as well. Yes, and they, I, I doubt that this this business wanted to be associated with Tatiana. People twerking at Tatiana. <laughs> And and Cardi B talking about how he, she just swallows nuts. So Is that what she says? <laughs> that's what she says. Oh in the song. shit! <laughs> so it was it was just a lot of wildness. It was a lot of fun working at Pride. It was it's so great. Can't wait to to do it again next year. Shout out to Little Nas X, bro. I listen. Me, you had a feeling. I I. I don't know why I didn't just believe your gut feeling because you're pretty good at calling it. But man, shout out to Little Nas X, bro. Really, just be yourself, man. Be who you want. Love who you love. Also, um, they were saying that if you followed him since he first did his uh, Stan account, mm-hmm. that yeah, he apparently he claimed he said he was he was gay that too. So yeah, so you know it was, yeah, go go good for him, man. Bro, number one hit, twelve num- weeks in a row. Black, a gay black man, a country song, number one, 12 weeks. Fuck yeah, bro. That's what I want to yeah, see. Yeah. That's kudos, what I love kudos, to see. Kudos bro. to Lil Nas X. Also, his Twitter is hilarious. Follow him on Twitter because he is hilarious. Dude. He is. He is. Uh, he, uh, he left the comment. He's like, yo, just because I'm gay doesn't mean I'm gay. <laughs> it was just. <laughs> bro, he's, he's really funny. He's really funny. But before we, we sign off, I just I wanted to kind of ended on a little bit of a serious note because something did happen uh, last week that uh, sent waves throughout the YouTube community and just the gaming community in general because unfortunately last week Etika, uh, who's a big Nintendo streamer was was found dead in, Mm -hmm. in in the East River. NYPD tweeted out that he had committed suicide. Well, the chief medical examiner uh, confirmed that he died from from drowning, and it's it's like it sucks, bro. Honestly, like it it's it's. I didn't watch too much Etika. I love, but every time there was more Super Smash Brothers announcements, his reactions were top notch, bro. He was he was a lot of fun from the few clips that I saw. Now I'm not gonna sit here and claim that you know, I was a huge fan, yeah. But I was a fan of of whatever content that I did manage to see from him. Um. He put out like the super fucking heartbreaking video before it all happened. Um, I didn't, <laughs> cause he he went missing right, and I I didn't know what to expect. So when the NYPD tweeted out that uh, they found his remains at the East River, it was it was fucking sucked, bro. Like 
Like that really sucks, man. Um, especially because when when it first when the video first dropped, where he was, you know, doing all that the suicidal thoughts that he was having, um, a lot of people on the internet just kind of w- waved it off because they thought you know it was just like another uh, promo or another gimmick that he was doing. And, and they were egging him on. Like, yeah, and it was. Oh, you should do it next week or the week after. Yeah, and. Mental health is a serious thing, bro. Like, <clears throat> I'm trying. Like, I'm trying not to like cry right here because it, 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 bro, it fucking sucks, bro. That a guy like like Etika and we we didn't know him personally, so I'm not gonna speak on on his personal life. But the the energy that he radiated in his streams, uh, to to see that spark, you know, just get taken out like it did, man. Uh, especially with suicide. It's just the, the worst, man. And, you know, rest in peace to Etika, bro. It's Joy-Con boys for fucking ever, bro. <laughs> um, our, our fucking, you know, our, our th- thoughts and, and love, all our, our all of our love is, is being sent out to his family, uh, especially his mom. Man, it's just, it fucking sucks, dude. Listen, if, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling suicidal, please, please, please look for some help, man. The, the world is better with you in it it's it's better to it's also better to just put out more love out there bro like you and i both we've, we've been through really bad places in our lives and we're not you know a hundred percent through them always no definitely and some days are, are way harder than most but well if you're if you're feeling suicidal please reach out to help even if it's the suicide hotline to to a family member speak to your dog speak to anybody that can help you get any sort of release because honestly uh mental health is a is a real serious thing uh it's really not something to be playing around with because i don't know man the world is just better with you in it and i we're not saying it just to say it i wholeheartedly believe that even though you may not see it at that moment even though sometimes it's really hard to get up I promise you you made one person smile that day whether it's your mom just having a random thought of you whether it's a friend who is remembering a joke that you said during you know game time whether it's you know if you're a streamer like Etika you know just a random fan of yours is gonna remember a moment like when Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was first announced and you jumped off the, the your desk um Man, it just it fucking sucks, bro. For 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 something like that to happen, and just rest in peace to Etika, bro. We we fucking loved you. Um, <laughs> just uh, just seek help if if you need it. Please, please, just seek some help. All right, we're gonna link no, to up, the. Um, mm-hmm. I want to say real quick. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say too much about this. Yeah, but um, you're not a bitch, nigga. <laughs> for asking for help. You're not, bro. Okay. You're not. It, it takes a real man to ask for help mm-hmm. when they most need it. Yeah, because that's like that's when you're most vulnerable, bro. Yeah. And when you're when you're feeling the most weak, and you you willingly seek out help, that's that's strength right there. It is from your from the heart from the soul. It takes everything for you to go I, I I can't keep living like this so so please guys right, like, please there, there's a time for joking yeah and then there's a time where you can see somebody asking for help mm-hmm. and also to um the people out there mm-hmm. who have a friend that has come up to them mm-hmm. and you just laugh it off that is not what you want to do in those situations the worst thing okay because there there are sh- there's always signs when someone's close to the to the edge okay and as a friend, family member, close relative, it's up to you to be a crutch for them at that point. Absolutely, yeah. And like I said, that's that doesn't make you weak, okay? Yeah, just get help, man. Just we love you. Like even you just you know we're we're not a big podcast, but if you manage to hear this, and we we don't know you. You need to send us a message. Anything, bro. Just anything that we can do on our end 
to, to help anybody out. We're, we're more than willing to do it. So just love, just try loving yourself a little more and just see the, the light that you are into somebody's life. Uh, once again, rest in peace to Attica. Yes, and um, if yeah, if you like you said, if you do end up listening to us, mm-hmm. Fake and I, we're always here. You know, just even if you just want to vent mm-hmm. about like you stubbed your toe, you know, <laughs> whatever, man. Uh, no matter what it is, we're never gonna be like leave us alone. We're always open to hear to listen from you guys. You yeah, know? for sure. Just reach out, man. Yeah, I'm. I think. I think it'll it'll be better if we just end it end the stream like that. I end the podcast episode like this actually. No, yeah, yeah, definitely. So um one one last time, bro. Rest in peace, Etika. Rest in peace. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Love and prayers to his family. Hope you guys have a great day. Right. Enjoy the fourth of July weekend. <laughs> yeah. Joy Con boys for fucking ever, bro. Don't forget.